evening and welcome. Please turn in your songbook, page number 488. Hey, you're going to need a songbook. 488, stand with me, please. He keeps me singing. singing 470 470 footprints of Jesus Y'all singing really good, and I appreciate it, and we're glad you're here. Very, very good crowd on a Wednesday night in the month of September, and we appreciate everybody being in the house of the Lord. Brother Kyle's held up with traffic. Uh, I think Ben is over there. Andrea's over there. Their mother, Miss Andrea's mother, who is Miss Hazel Davis, 
I think now the uh, latest uh, update that we received just a little bit ago was approximately somewhere in the neighborhood of 72 hours. She had a stroke and uh, been in the hospital ever since. And there's just a lot of, uh, I think we called, I guess, mitigating factors that are working against her. So we'd like to pray for this family tonight and uh, pray for all the, all the, Andrea has, there's five sisters there, all of them at the hospital. There were last night anyway, but pray for the whole family. They love their mother deeply. And let's just ask God to have his way and to have his plan orchestrated throughout this whole entire ordeal. But some of them will be coming in. But let's pray for them, Brother Cam. And then we'll shake hands, and then we're going to come back. We're going to stand again and sing another great hymn of the faith. All right, Brother Cam. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you tonight, and we thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to be in your house. Lord, we, we don't take it for granted when we get to come to church and worship you freely. Lord, we thank you for that opportunity and that, and that privilege that we have to do that. Lord, I pray that you'll help the Atkins family tonight, Lord, and, and Miss Andrea's sisters and that whole family. Miss Andrea, Lord, I pray that you'll be with them. Lord, give them peace that passes all understanding, Lord. I pray that you just help them. Lord, give them grace. Lord, we thank you for that grace you bestowed on us every day of our life. Lord, we're undeserving of it, Lord, and we thank you for it today. Lord, we thank you that, that you got a hold of us before religion got a hold of us. We thank you you got a hold of us before a denomination got a hold of us or a non-denomination got a hold of us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you saved us and you, and you saw fit to save us. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we love you and we thank you for forgiveness of sins. I pray that you'll help Brother Austin tonight, Lord. I pray that you'll be with him. Lord, I pray that you'll, I pray that you'll make the nervousness go away. I pray that you'll speak to him and make him, and, and Lord, I pray that you'll just help him. Thank you and love you for everything you've done for us and bless the rest of the night's service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We want to shake hands, but we're going to do that in just a moment. I want to welcome Tammy. Uh, I guess, did they, did they eventually evacuate you from there down there? Wow, bless your heart. You haven't been able to go home for a while, have you? Yeah, so I hope everything will be okay. And, uh, you know, my, my nephew told, told me by text about the hurricane. It's about 110 miles an hour now. I said, y'all fix to take a hit. And you know what he said to me? He said, bring it. I said, yeah, okay, boy. So we'll, we'll find out how much he wants it brought after church tonight, all right? But anyway, shake hands. Tell somebody you love them. Don't go nowhere. Fellowship a little bit, all right?
Hallelujah Chorus is on page 37, but we won't sing that. 345, let's stand and sing Blessed Assurance. There we go. Verse 3, and when we get to the chorus and want all the instruments to drop out, verse 3, perfect submission, all is at rest, I and my Savior are happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking up, filled with his good. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let's do that again. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Great song, amen, great song. Appreciate it. Thank you, Brother Herbal. Everybody's looking this way. Not a lot of announcements, but I want to go over them real quick. And, uh, you know, we, we spend finances to do uh, the adequate things that are necessary here at Mountain View Baptist Church. One of those things is doing stuff like this. And uh, the, these are nice. They're not very, real costly, but we want you to utilize them, all right? So they're on both side tables. Might be some down here. This is the Youth Rally poster. Everybody needs to get one. Start inviting people. It's going to be on the church website real soon. Uh, and so it's going to be, well, it's already on the, on the screens. It's everywhere. We don't want you to miss this in October, all right? Keep that in mind. Tomorrow and Friday, and I think they'll come home Saturday, the Father and Son Retreat. See Brother Perry or Brother Kirko, if any of you have to turn in finances on that. Please be careful, everybody. Have a enjoyable time. Several are coming down Friday evening, I believe. So make sure y'all tell everybody where everybody's eating, all right? We appreciate that. That's the Father and Son Retreat. And then this Sunday night, the Rochester will be here. Don't miss the service. The uh, Rochester family out of Blacksburg, South Carolina, they'll be here to sing for us on a Sunday night. 
this, this Sunday night. So keep that in mind. Youth choir, September 14th. And then again, we want to announce the baby shower for Miss Crystal Pearson. She's here tonight, uh, immediately after the service on the Sunday night of September the 15th, all right? And then we also just got news, and we didn't know about it, but Miss Newsom, I guess that's relative, I know it's relative to yours, Miss New, that's your uncle then, uh, brother passed away. So we just found out, I was very sorry. Is your mom here? Your mom's not here. Miss Newsom, are you here? There you are, I'm sorry. God bless your heart. Just found out about it, and we're very sorry. And uh, let's remember her for that up in Ohio, up in Ohio, no, okay. And we're close. Kentucky, okay. All right, let's pray for the family, all right, and the loss of her brother, okay. Y'all ready to sing for us? They're going to sing one. We're going to turn this young preacher loose. I know he's ready. He's probably going to faint when he gets up here, so somebody that's a nurse be ready to help him, all right. When justice called for a payment for sin, no one worthy could be found among men. But the precious Son of God, with a cross and thorny crown, paid the debt with the blood of the Lamb. paid in full. I'm glad we don't have to pay for it. Amen. Already been paid for. All right, get your Bibles, everybody. Everybody get your Bibles. This is Austin Bullock. He's going to preach for us. And uh, you pray for him that God will bless him. And I, I know I know anybody would be nervous to preach anywhere, all right? I don't know if you understand that, but when you're a preacher, to preach anywhere makes you nervous. I'm telling you, it makes you nervous. Why? Because it's an, an absolute awesome responsibility. So uh, let's hear him well. Give me undivided attention. God bless you. Turn your mic on, okay? Please. I hope this on. <clears throat> he don't know this, but he said that I would faint when I get up here. If I do, he's going to take charge and come finish preaching. Uh, turn your Bibles to Psalm chapter 145, if you will. And while you're turning, I just want to say that it's an honor and a privilege to stand up here and preach tonight. Um... Not many young preachers get the privilege to stand up and preach the Word of God, and I'm just glad that I go to an old-time, old-fashioned church where we can serve God the right way. Um, and I do want to say that it's honoring to know that some men of God just stood behind this pulpit, like Percy Ray, Dr. Jimmy Robbins, Dr. Ed Maccabee. 
Lester Roloff, our pastor. You know, as a young preacher, I want to follow the footsteps that they preach. I, I don't want to be like them, but I want to preach the Word of God like them. So if you found your scripture, Psalm 145, I'll start in verse 1. I will extol thee. If you don't know what that word extol means, that means praise. My God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Skip down to verse 8. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great of mercy. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are, o- are over all his works. Dear Heavenly Father, right now I come to you, Lord, and I just want to give you all the praise and honor and glory for this moment, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would just hide me behind the cross, Lord. Give me the unction to preach tonight, Lord. Anoint me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet, Lord. Take all the nervousness away tonight, Lord. God, I pray that this message that you've laid on my heart would just touch somebody's heart tonight, Lord. I pray if there's one that's lost and undone without you tonight, Lord, I pray that you would save them for us everlasting too late. You don't give us tomorrow. You don't give us the next breath. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. In your name I pray. Amen. This psalm is a psalm of, from King David, and, and he's, he's given praise. He, he's given praise for the works that God's done. The works that God's done in his life. You know, God does works in our life that every day, he he does something in our life magnificent that we don't see. You know, we take God for granted. I I don't want to, I use that word lightly, but we take God for granted every day. You know, how, how many times do you praise God the way King David praised God right here? You know, King David used the the Lord's name nine times in this passage of scripture. Nine times. And tonight I want to focus on something that I've seen in this passage of scripture. If you look, it says the Lord is. The Lord is what? You know, when I, when I think about that, the Lord is sinless. The Lord is blameless. The Lord is great. The Lord is magnificent. The Lord is merciful. The Lord is, he, he's everything to me. And you know, we see right here, David is praising God. He's, get, he's exalting God. He, he's letting him know. I believe David right here is saying, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. I thank you for the works that you've done in my life. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done. Lord, Lord, I'm going to praise you for what you've done now and what you're going to do later. Lord, you know, if I was David right here, I would praise David the same, or I would praise the Lord the same way. But when I look at my life, when I look at my life, I don't praise God enough. Now, I don't want to be a preacher that stands up here and waits to the last minute to say, "Do you know God? Do you know the Lord?" And I want to say, when's the last time you praised the Lord? When's the last time You sat down on your hands and knees and cried out to God. When's the last time you exalted His name? When's the last time you showed Him the love that He has for us? You know, I don't need, or God don't need me tonight. I need Him. We all need God. God don't need us. God didn't have to be merciful enough to go to the cross and die for us. He didn't have to send Jesus Christ to the cross to die for our sins, to give us a perfect life, to try to live and strive to be like Him. Number one tonight, if you're taking notes, I want to look in verse number nine where it says, the Lord is gracious. You know, I took that word gracious right there and number one, the Lord is merciful. I looked up that word merciful. And you know, this world's so corrupt, it's so wicked. The internet's terrible, there's trash on it. You know, I looked up that word merciful on dictionary.com. And you know what? It gave merciful in a sentence. And you want to know what it said? It was the will of God 
of a, or it was the will of, it was the will of a merciful God for us to be saved. Y'all want to know that on the, I about ran a lap in my house to know that the internet still says and uses God in a sentence that says it was the will of a merciful God for us to be saved. God didn't have to save us. God didn't have to do this for us. God didn't have to give us this life. We deserve hell more than anything else. And I want to give all the praise and honor to God for giving me a Savior, Jesus Christ. God didn't have to show us that mercy. God didn't have to do all the wonderful works in our life. God didn't have to do nothing for us. God's merciful enough if you low on your bills one week, He can help you out the next week. If your marriage is messed up, He can help you out. He shows mercy. But I want to tell you right here and put a pause in and say, God shows mercy for the works that you do. If you're not doing the works of the Lord, how's He going to bless you? How's He going to be merciful? How's He going to show you that mercy if you're not doing the works of the Lord? Number two tonight, the Lord is worthy. I jump down to verse 17, because if you look in this passage of scripture, it uses the Lord is four times. The Lord is four times. And you know, that, that popped out to me, and I was, I was studying, and you know, th this message I, I planned on, I had another message prepared for tonight. Um, at 5.15, the Lord said, you're not preaching that, you're going to preach this. And, and I just got to thinking, when I read that the Lord is, the Lord is good to me, the Lord's good to us. You know, the Lord's been good in my life. He's gave me a roof over my head, shoes on my feet, food in my stomach. We, like I said, he don't have to do that for us. But that's his mercy and his love towards us. And, and I just, I thank him for that. I do. But the Lord is worthy. If you look in verse 17, it said, The Lord is righteous in all of his ways and holy in all of his works. You know, that word righteous means worthy. He's worthy of our praise. David's given him the praise. David's given him all the honor and the glory. But when's the last time we gave him our praise? When's the last time we praised God for what he's done in our life? When's the last time we just sat down and really praised God for saving us? You know, salvation is the biggest thing. If you ain't saved, you ain't going to heaven. So... When's the last time you praised him for that? Like I said earlier, the Lord, the Lord is sinless, he's blameless, he's faultless. The, the Lord's perfect. So we should praise him for his perfectness and ask him to give, forgive us of our unworthiness. You know... God, I, I looked this up too when I looked up this word. I about put magnificent right here. He, he's magnificent. He's a magnificent God. He put the stars in the sky, the sun in the, the, the sun don't drop, the stars don't drop, the sky is there. And, and, and this church ain't floating, and we ain't floating, we on ground. So we should praise him for that. Lord help us. <laughs> I might I don't want to preach fast, I really don't. But I was told if I do get us out of here early, everybody would be happy. Praise the Lord. <laughs> no, the preacher did not say that. But number three tonight. Before I get to number three, I just want to say that I am doing the will of God right here. I I'm not preaching fast to preach fast. I'm not nervous. I'm not. But at the start I was. But if I wasn't nervous, I better be, a, I better be worried. Because if I wasn't nervous and I just got up here 
and wanted to preach without God? Lord, help me. If I got up here, the Bible talks about fake, fake prophets. If I got up here to proclaim Jesus' name without Him, I better feel sorry for what I just did. But number three tonight, see in verse 18, the Lord is nigh unto all of them that call upon Him. To all that call upon Him in truth. You know, number three tonight, I use, I use this word. The Lord is open. The Lord has opened our cry. The Lord has opened our voice. He knows our voice. But it, even more so, the Lord's ear is always open. We can call upon Him night, day, any time of the day. And I thank God for that. Because today was one of the worst days of my life. Um, Brother Landon here, me and him talk on a day-to-day -day basis And he, we was talking and he said The devil's going to be on you today because you're preaching tonight And sure behold, the devil was on me today Left and right, um, I got here at the church at 6.30 Sat in the parking lot, meditated, prayed I said, God, today was rough but you know what's even better? I'm fixing to go into the house of the Lord and praise your name when I didn't even have to. I could be somewhere else on a Wednesday night on prayer meeting night at 730. But I'm in the house of God and I get to preach his word and I thank him for that. He hears our cry. He hears our voice. When's the last time you called upon him? When's the last time you was in need and you said, oh God, help me, I'm in, a, I'm in a bind. My phone bill's due Friday, I don't have the money. When's the last time you sat down on your face and cried out to God and said, Lord, make a way. When's the last time you said, Lord, I don't need myself, I need you. When's the last time you just turned everything over to God and talked to Him and said, Lord, I'm giving it all to you. It's not mine anyways. You know, we, we take this life in a big picture. And we idolize things in this world when, we're not, when we don't need to. Because the Bible says idolatry is a sin. Yeah. And there's many people that idolize things in this world over God. And right here, this is where you need to cry out to God and let Him know. You give His life, you give your life to Him, and you surrender everything. Because I can tell you, you don't have to surrender your life. That, that don't mean, well, I'm not going into the ministry, so I ain't got to surrender what I do. No, that's wrong. Preachers ain't the only people that's got to surrender everything. We should all want to surrender our life to God. We should all want to live for the Lord. We should all want to do His works. Then when we do His works, we should want to praise Him for it. And in close, I just want to close the service. Ten analysts. As we all stand around the building. I want to ask you a question. What is the Lord truly to you? What does He truly mean to you? Lord, I come to you right now. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to come up here and preach your word tonight, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the liberty. I thank you for the freedom. Lord, I pray right now that if there's one in this service that don't know you, Lord, I pray that they had come to know you for us everlasting too late. Lord, I pray that if there's one that's not cried out to you in a while, Lord, I pray that they would just cry out your name tonight, Lord, and surrender their life to you. Lord, I love you. I thank you. And 
I give all the praise, honor, and glory to you. And it's in your name I pray.